You're watching Beyond Markets. Welcome. I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On today's show, we'll discuss how to develop prosperous and inclusive cities in Africa. As always, you can join the conversation. Just follow us on Twitter as, at CNBC Africa. You can also follow me too at Esther O. Awuni. Use the hashtag Beyond Markets. Now, Africa is expected to grow by nearly a billion people by the year 2050. So how can governments across the continent plan ahead to build prosperous and inclusive cities on the continent? Hastings Chikoko, Africa Regional Director of C40 Cities Climate Leadership, joins me for this discussion. Now, Hastings, before we go into uh, how we're looking at national urban policies as a policy tool to help assist national governments in better planning uh, their cities, especially for the future, and just basically cope with uh, the rising urbanization that we're seeing. Let's talk about how urbanization has panned out, or rapid urbanization has panned out in the last decade or so, and the picture that we're seeing right now. Talk us through that. Right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for really having me. Yes, you're right. Um, Africa is uh, at the moment experiencing rapid urbanization. Uh, it is really an unprecedented uh, rate of urbanization. Uh, when you look at the waves of urbanization that have happened before, this particular one first is, um, is happening at a very fast rate. And uh, secondly, it is also uh, happening against a backdrop of uh, uh, challenges in terms of uh, climate change. So there are issues of uh, resilience that have to be taken into account and issues of sustainability. How do we grow sustainable and resilient cities? Uh, this makes uh, this wave of urbanization unique. But it also uh, is happening at a time when the urban population or the people that are coming into these cities are well empowered. They have access to information uh, through technology, and they are more empowered to demand uh, better quality of life. So it's really at a time when um, uh, city governments, as well as national governments, have to deal with uh, increased demand for social services that are actually um, coming from people that have access to better information that can actually do a comparative analysis of their quality of living with uh, cities elsewhere. Um, in Africa, the uh, urbanization, the rate actually, the growth, uh, the population growth in cities is varied. We have some cities where, where that are expected to really like uh, double the current size. And uh, we have uh, some cities that uh, seem to be really uh, stable. Uh, but what is important to notice is that we have cities that we can consider secondary cities at the moment. Cities that are really small towns at the moment that are projected to, to actually grow. And uh, the this, this systems that are in place at the moment are not well positioned to cope with the growth that is, that is expected. What we're hearing now is that the urbanization we're seeing on the continent is coming or is bringing more challenges than opportunities. I mean, obviously the opportunities are there, uh, especially for new planning and uh, for those governments who are committed to using uh, the national urban policies as a tool to drive uh, better cities in the future. But what are your thoughts in terms of how big a problem that could be for governments who, uh, who now want to you know, show some commitment in making the cities more progressive? Um, you know, um, I look at it uh, like uh, a coin that has two sides. So on one hand, this, um, this urbanization is really, could actually be um, a great opportunity for African governments in a sense that um, there, there are opportunities for economic uh, growth, economic development. There are opportunities for uh, improved uh, uh, quality of life for uh, citizens, opportunities for job creation, opportunities to take advantage of the growth to, uh, to position cities and towns um, in, a, in, a, in such a way that they can provide better uh, social services. However, 
This is only possible if national governments are prepared, if national governments are actually putting in place uh, policies and plans that can actually harness this, uh, um, these opportunities that are arising from the demographic shift. Um, the challenge that I see is that that is not happening uh, at, a, at, at a speed that, uh, that aligns with the rate of urbanization. So if we are not careful, the population growth or urbanization itself could actually just translate into multiplication of poverty in uh, African cities. It could actually increase conflicts in African cities. But it, it, at it, and it could also just multiply or increase the levels of inequality in African cities. That's the danger that we should, uh, we should, uh, we should actually um, be on the lookout for. That's the challenge that national governments should embrace. Now, for, th for them to be prepared, there is need to, to be well, for them to be well informed. And this brings us to the point of uh, data management or access to sound information uh, that, that actually equip, uh, equips the, the, the leadership at national level to be able to plan accordingly. Um, most of the times, you find that uh, policies or plans or strategies that are made are really just uh, those that come from the podium. Uh, political podium, maybe promises made during campaigns, or the really things that are, to some extent, thumbs up. We need to take a radical shift. We need to embrace data-driven, evidence-based planning. And this is where uh, most national governments need, uh, should start from. We need to ensure that we have systems in place uh, that actually enables us to um, gather, to gather uh, a a relevant data, we need to make sure that there are partnerships in place with um, uh, research and academic institutions that, that help us really uh, harness the knowledge that is out there to inform planning. But we also need to make sure that we are able to do scenario uh, planning, to do modeling, to help us really project what this urbanization mean to different sectors in, 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 our, in our countries. What does, it mean, uh, in term, uh, what does it mean in terms of infrastructure development? What does it mean uh, in terms of job creation, in terms of uh, provision of health services? We need to be able to project that. This is a gap at the moment. Africa in general has got um, uh, information poverty that needs to be addressed and cities um, need to actually take lead in ensuring that they are closing information gaps within, with, uh, within their jurisdiction, but also within the context of uh, broader urban, um, uh, broader national imperatives. Now, according to a paper by Amit C. Forces Cities Climate Leadership, you have said that uh, national urban policies could be a very effective tool. You've also pointed that out uh, from what you said so far. And of course, key to achieving that will have to start at the top. That's the national government's commitment on their part, strategic leadership, to, I to appreciate and identify uh, the, the need for this going forward. Now, for, as far as national urban policies are concerned, about, according to the paper, 18 countries right now, including Nigeria, have something similar to what a proper a national urban policy as a tool should look like. Uh, would you say that that is still, that's considered a good starting point? And can these countries and perhaps others build on what they have right now going forward? Well, I wouldn't say it's a good starting point. I think um, we could have done better. 18 countries um, having national policies out of over 50 countries, uh, that's, that's concerning. And of course, one thing that you should also understand is according to the paper, the report, the recent report that uh, African Center for Cities uh, in, uh, in collaboration with the Coalition for Urban Transition have produced, they have demonstrated that the policies that are there in these 18 countries, um, number one, they haven't actually ticked all the boxes. Some of them really just uh, really are beginning to look like urban policies. There is a lot of work that needs to be done. Secondly, um, these policies, um, they have been developed in the, in the, in the last uh, decade, really. 
Uh, so they are fairly new and, um, and uh, they are still, we, we still need to look into how they are being implemented. So there is some experience also that needs to be, to be, to be, to be harnessed in terms of how best we can implement these policies. So um, there is a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of um, uh, policy development. And for me, um, the question one should ask is, um, how should these policies be developed first? And second, what should they look like? So in terms of how, it uh, links back to what we have been discussing um, on uh, availability of data, availability of evidence that can inform the development of these policies, but also making sure that um, uh, there is adequate consultation in the development of these policies. They are not policies that are just um, uh, top, top uh, down, but they are policies that um, have um, involved um, different affected groups, right from the communities, right from the um, urban residents themselves to uh, national, but also aligning them with some international commitments. We have just um, had, a f I think, a, a couple of years ago, um, the new urban agenda, which is kind of like a global commitment and uh, a global framework that, is, uh, that, that guides uh, UN member states uh, on how to develop uh, cities and how to really um, approach um, urban development, including this whole uh, uh, rapid rate of urbanization. There is need to make sure that what the process for developing national okay. urban policies aligns with uh, the new urban agenda. But also, I've talked about the challenge that we have on sustainability and resilience. I think we need to also ensure that um, the policies we have embrace that and align them with uh, the Paris Agreement, which is an agreement that member states uh, made in terms okay. of uh, how they respond to challenges of uh, climate change. We're going to take a break at this point, Hastings. We'll come back and talk about the role that C40 City's climate leadership uh, is playing in all of this. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. I've been speaking to Hastings Chikoko, Africa Regional Director of C40 City Climate Leadership. Still with me on today's show is Hastings Chikoko, the Africa Regional Director of C40 City's Climate Leadership. Hastings, thank you for your time so far. You've you pointed out many points in terms of how uh, the policies that will help, that could help uh, African governments build sustainable, inclusive cities in the future. And of course, key to that is coming up with very uh, concrete and progressive national urban policies. But I'm, I'm also thinking that for those, when those, if those policies are eventually put together uh, going forward, what are those factors that will make those policies, uh, the implementation of those policies, uh, successful? One, two. How is C40 City's climate leadership? What role do you can you play to ensuring or assisting these national governments in ensuring that those policies uh, are implemented effectively? Right. Um, the recent report that has also that has uh, been um, released by African Centre for Cities and uh, the Global coalition for urban transition has highlighted some key uh, areas that uh, national urban policy development processes should uh, should consider I think the first uh, thing that I, sh I we should emphasize is really focusing on uh, governance so we need to 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 make sure that the governance regimes in our countries uh, do allow for coordination and linkages between different spheres of uh, government, uh, right from the um, uh, city governments to provincial governments and to national government. At the moment, uh, this, is an, this, there is, this is an area of weakness in most countries, where you find that uh, what um, the national government is doing does not really translate to meaningful um, uh, impact at the city level and vice versa. So we need to ensure that the policies that we develop close that gap. We need to engage with uh, different um, levels of government, including the local, local institutions, um, and make sure that um, these 
spheres of governments are empowered, uh, making sure that they have the resources, they have the capacity to actually play a meaningful role in, uh, in, in, their, in, in the implementation of the policy. Now, just to tell you, recently uh, the Africa Union uh, did come up with the African Ch Charter, African Charter on uh, Decentralization, uh, lo uh, local governance and uh, local development. We're just trying to look at how do we ensure that different spheres of government are um, well coordinated and are working together in delivering um, um, cities that contribute to the economic and social development of the continent. What is interesting is, as I speak now, only three um, countries have ratified that. That shows you the willingness um, or the lack of, willing, uh, lack of political will in trying to make this thing happen. So that's an area that we need to focus on. Secondly, we need to look at uh, the issue of uh, municipal financing. Do the cities or municipalities have adequate resources to put in place systems and services that will be able to cater for the people that are coming into these jurisdictions given the rate of urbanization? That is a big question. Um, when you look at the municipal budgets, per capita municipal bu uh, budget, it's worrying. You see like uh, in Europe, if we just take uh, Bristol, for example, you find that they have a uh, uh, municipal budget per capita of uh, four, over $4,000. And uh, there are some small cities in uh, Colombia that have a municipal uh, budget, uh, a per capita municipal budget of uh, around about uh, $600. You come to Africa, of course you have uh, cities like Cape Town that has uh, roughly uh, a per capita budget of uh, $800. But you have cities like Abidjan, where you have uh, $0.02. That's a per capita budget. And you have Accra, they have $12 uh, uh, as per capita budget. What can those cities do to actually save the increasing number of people that are coming into these cities? So we need to have a conversation around municipal financing, looking at how do we diversify the financing how do we decentralize revenue collection and tax? And how do we really incentivize um, cities to be able to, 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 um, to raise revenue uh, for, for activities in, the, in, in their cities? Now, Hastings, I asked earlier the support, uh, the work that C40 Cities Climate, the, the work that you do, especially uh, in assisting national governments, perhaps uh, uh, assisting them with the national urban policies and, of course, issues around climate change. So the C40 Cities uh, Climate Leadership Group um, is working with uh, different uh, partners, especially the uh, Coalition for Urban Transition, to actually work with uh, national governments to deal with uh, some of the gaps in their national urban policies. And uh, what we are focusing on, besides what I have uh, mentioned, besides the uh, improving, improved governance, uh, improved financing, we are also looking at issues of infrastructure. For the African cities to really thrive and be able to contribute meaningfully to the uh, national economic development, we need to really look at um, the infrastructure in the city in terms of the uh, quantity, quality, but also how resilient it is. So um, we, are working, we are working with uh, different cities to really examine the status of infrastructure in, 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 in the cities. And that is another area that is also concerning. Uh, the African Development Bank uh, recently d uh, produced a, kind of like an, a report, an analysis of infrastructure in Africa. And the indication is that we have um, a, an infrastructure backlog or deficit um, that actually requires 90 billion US dollars per year for the next decade for us to close that. So there is a lot of work that needs to be done. And uh, we cannot talk about our cities uh, attracting investment. Um, or uh, really, we cannot even talk about growing uh, city economies without um, uh, improved water infrastructure without improved um, energy infrastructure and the road, uh, the road infrastructure itself. So uh, C40 working with the global um, 
um, coalition for urban transition, uh, we are having conversation with uh, both cities and national governments to see how we can, we can close that. Um, this, the other area that um, I know that there's, there's, I know there's a lot of work. I know there's a lot of work that the, the government has to do. But what about the role of the private sector here? Excellent. Um, so yes, for cities to really achieve some of the uh, objectives that they are setting, both infrastructure and also even uh, economic development, there is need to really develop meaningful partnerships, and um, the partnerships really range from. Uh, getting the requisite knowledge and innovation, so partnership, partnerships with uh, university and academic institutions, but also getting that innovation incubated in the cities and being rolled out in cities. And this is where we actually are supporting cities to engage with the business sector uh, into kind of like um, uh, co-creation of solutions to different challenges that cities are are facing. In C4, for example, we have an initiative which we call City Solution, Solutions Platform. This is a platform that we are creating where city leaders, and sometimes we invite some uh, national leaders, engage with uh, the business sector and look at the challenges that uh, cities are facing, um, especially given the um, urbanization and given the, the imperative to, to grow economies, and on the basis of that try to to co-create uh, solutions and, uh, and engage the, uh, the private sector to be key players in providing uh, the solution. There is an opportunity at the moment because um, most cities have embraced um, the role, the key role private sector plays in terms of investment, in terms of innovation, in terms of technology, but also really in terms of the implementation or, or shaping policies. Um, uh, within these cities. So we need to harness that. Um, having said that, there is also need to engage uh, local uh, institutions, community institutions, and it's not just private sector and city leadership, but the beneficiaries themselves also have to be part of this. So for example, when we deal with um, issues of um, um, uh, services, social services, we shouldn't just sit down with uh, cities and with uh, city officials and um, private sector and try to, to come up with solutions. They should be part of the conversation. They should come to the table. So partnerships with okay. local groups, um, local community groups or community uh, committees, whatever is out, uh, out there is also very critical. Okay, Hastings, I mean, Africa is expected to have a population surge by the year 2050. Now, from all that you've said, I mean, the picture doesn't look too bright, especially when one looks at the number of countries so far that have come up with uh, a national urban policies. And for those 18 that have that right now, like you said, it's not even something concrete. How optimistic are you going forward that uh, we can, as soon as possible, get on the right path and move at a pace necessary to prepare African governments for the, the, the rapid urbanization that we're going to see in the city and, of course, the huge population growth? What are your thoughts on that? Well, um, we are increasingly getting uh, uh, optimistic uh, just because there is a recognition of the challenges that, uh, that we have. And already there are some guiding frameworks that have been put in place that I, I believe will, uh, will um, guide the thinking as well as the response to close the, the gaps that currently exist. I will cite um, a few, first, first of all at the international level, uh, the new urban agenda does set clear uh, guidelines on how national governments can actually uh, embrace urbanization and how national governments can, uh, can uh, develop um, national urban policies. But also if you look at the sustainable development goals, you, re you, you will see that there is basically one goal that is specifically focusing on urbanization. This is actually uh, the first time we are having uh, a development goal that has a specific focus 
on uh, urban areas. So that to me is an opportunity. I, I really do appreciate your time today. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for sharing that with us today. We appreciate your time. Hastings Chikoko, Africa Regional Director of C40 Cities Climate Leadership. That's all we have on today's show. As always, you can watch our previous episodes of Beyond Markets on our website. That's cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets and you can follow my Twitter handle too at Esther O. Awoni. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.